Dear friends, in our first reading today, there is a very striking statement made by Elijah the prophet to his disciple Elisha. And that statement is, make your request, make your request. Imagine today, 17th of June, 2020, the Lord asks you, make your request. And we shall see, just make the request. I'm pretty sure that you begin to look at the lists you have. I want this, I want this, I want that. Because this is, it's even surprising. Like being given a blank check. So fill the amount you want. So there are many things that will come to the mind. But what was the answer of Elisha? Elisha did not ask for material things. He just said, a double share of your spirit. That is what I want to inherit from you. A double share of your spirit. You know, in uh, biblical uh, customs, when a father has children, the eldest son takes the double share of the inheritance of uh, the father. So, Elisha, by saying, I want a double share of your spirit, he wants really to be the main and the principal heir of uh, uh, prophet Elijah. He wants really to continue his ministry. He's asking for the spirit. And what has he got? Because the conditions that were set, he fulfilled them. The conditions were fulfilled. And we see that just like Elijah was able to strike the water of the Jordan and to cross, we see that once Elisha has received that spirit, the spirit is acting in him. So you can see the continuity between Elijah and Elisha. And this is the same thing with the disciples of Jesus. You know, Jesus, as he separated himself from us, ascension, what did he promise? Holy Spirit. And once the disciples received the Holy Spirit, we see that what they were doing was actually what Jesus himself was doing. So that it is the Spirit of Jesus acting in his disciples. Just like the same Spirit was acting in Elijah, is now acting in Elisha. That is why in everything we are asking in our prayers, it is paramount, of paramount importance to ask for the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself said, the Father cannot refuse the Holy Spirit to the people who are praying for the Holy Spirit. And when you have the Holy Spirit, the rest you have it. Because the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit knows what is pleasing to God. And the Holy Spirit will inspire you petitions and actions that to be pleasing to God. You need to have the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit knows the mind of God. He knows the death of God. So all that is pleasing to the Father and to the Son, the Holy Spirit will now tell us. And when you make your prayers, your prayers will be, uh, will be agreed and will be uh, accepted by the Lord. And in our gospel we see what the Holy Spirit inspires. There, are, there is a way of living religious life or spiritual life with the Holy Spirit and without the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit is to appear nice to people. Is to give, well, the, the semblance or the impression that I am somebody. It is wearing a mask. Right? The, 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 the hypocrite is the person who is impersonating another one. Just like when you are going to theater, 
you are playing a role. You are not truly yourself. So, spiritual life without the Holy Spirit or religious life without the Holy Spirit becomes the way of life of the hypocrites. We do things in order to attract other people so that people will praise us. And Jesus says, when we put the consideration of men first, then we have already got our reward. But when we accept the Holy Spirit to become our guide and our leader, the Holy Spirit will inspire us with the right attitudes. When it comes to almsgiving or sharing, when it comes to prayer, and when it comes to fasting. And the fact that Jesus is talking about these three aspects, it means that it is still relevant today. I don't think that almsgiving or prayers or fasting, they are only for Lent or Ash Wednesday or Good Friday or for the Old Testament. No, they are still relevant even today. But we have to do them in the spirit of the Lord. Not in order to seek applause from human beings, but in order to seek really uh, the applause or the approval that comes from God alone. So this is very important. But dear friends, let's look at those three things. Arms giving or sharing. It is not optional. It is not said that when some can, can share, others cannot. It's not optional. It is for everyone who wants to live a righteous life before God. Remember this. There is no human being on earth who is too poor that he or she cannot share, cannot give to others. There is no such a person. And there is no a person who is so rich that that person cannot receive something from others. So sharing is not optional. You see, Jesus, when he says some things, he means it. He said there is a reward. And that is why people like the apostles, they, they say, God loves a cheerful giver. Or there is greater happiness in giving than in receiving. So, Jesus said it. So, try it. You know sometimes, huh? In spiritual life, you have to say, let me take Jesus with his own words. Jesus, you say this. Okay, I'm going to do that. Then you see the results. And I'm pretty sure. I've already got testimony from many people and I'm pretty sure that you can say the same. That people will say, yes. The more I was sharing, the more I experienced that God was blessing me. It is not, uh, it's not a commerce, it's not a business with God. But there is a blessing, there is a reward in sharing. Jesus said it. The same thing for prayer. When we are praying, you know, especially the person you not even know that you are praying for him or her. And yet you are persevering in prayer. It happens. You know, there are many things that are happening to us. Eh? We are enjoying the fruit, but do you know that there are people who have been praying for you? You may not know. Maybe these people will never tell you. They will never call you maybe on Facebook or social media and tell you, hey, you know what? I've been praying for you. Huh? But you will experience the grace of God. You will escape from many ill fortunes and many things because people have been praying. And they have been praying in the secret. And just like uh, Jesus is saying, the Heavenly Father who sees what is done in the secret, we give you a reward. The same thing with fasting. That there are many things that are taking the place of God in our lives. That there are many things that are making us to become heavy. And when we ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten us, so that we can see that well, I used to think that this thing is necessary, why as a matter of fact, it is not even necessary. And you will discover that you gain more freedom in your life. But there is a reward attached to the way you do your fasting. So the, the request Elijah uh, asks uh, Elisha, 
the answer was the, the spirit the spirit who is in you so we also today like Elisha we are going to ask the Holy Spirit to come on us to inspire us the right attitude towards God and we'll be able to lead a life that is pleasing to God. Amen.